Okay, I want to give a bit of an update about where we are with the class um, and uh, comment a little bit on the discussions, the calendar, and really starting up the essay because I'm, I'm sure that's the, you know, that's the big assignment. Um, the discussions aren't so much, but let's let's go through them for a little bit, okay? First on the discussions, let me comment a little bit on that. What I did was I extended the due date, okay? I extended it until April 21st. Um, and if you if you did finish the uh, discussions for Smith, Marx, Keynes, um, and Friedman, you're in good shape. You you don't have to worry about that. You're good to go. If you finish most of them, but you got a couple, if you got something to do still, get them done. Okay. So that allows you a little bit of time to get them done. If you've gotten a couple of grades, like some fours or a six or something like that, that you're not thrilled with and you want to get the 10, go ahead and add a new post where you expand and develop what you did and show a little bit better understanding of Smith, Marx, Keynes, or Friedman and get the tens on it. I really want everybody to go through and do a good job on the discussions. Um, and that becomes good material that's useful. And so make sure you summarize the main points of each writer. Summarize the main points of what Smith is talking about with markets and how money isn't wealth and how he goes into, you know, production, productivity um, <clears throat> is wealth. That's where it is and how, how you can produce. Um, money is really just the marking, you know, the measuring stick and you know, the means of exchange. But go through how markets work on supply and demand, because that is one of the core theories at the heart of economics and has proven so incredibly reliable. OK, so that is a theory and it is a shockingly reliable theory for understanding and explaining how things work in economics. So make sure you understand the basic notions. In Smith, in Marx, understand that Marx really gets into um, how markets collapse when the supply, the production outstrips the demand. Um, <clears throat> what happens? Why do we have collapses of markets? OK, um, and go through Keynes and how he addresses with monetary policy the issue, the crises that Marx brings up. And then Friedman, how you're going to see a lot of Smith at work in Friedman and Friedman's writing in the 1970s. And one thing I need to make clear is I'm not going to make an explanatory video on Friedman. <clears throat> uh, just a, you know, a couple comments on him. Um, cause he's easy to read. He's writing a, um, you know, a Wall Street, that's a Wall Street Journal, um, article from the early seventies, I think 1970. Um, and it's now considered to be common knowledge in the business world and economics world. Um, he's right on the mark. So it's easy to understand. And it really is just a modernization of Smith. Um, and you'll see it at play still. OK, so that's the discussions and what I've done with them. Um, now, on a couple other things on the calendar changes, I've got the essay due um, not just after spring break, but I pushed it back a little bit further. OK, um, it's because I wanted to give you time for the draft stages and time to contact the writing lab. So let me show you on that. OK, um, I've pushed the due dates back for the discussions back to April 21st. OK, so you've got plenty of time if you need to get in there and adjust something, develop something. You've got time. If you've already got them done, you're good to go. You know, thank you very much for getting on that. Good job on that. OK, so I've extended all the discussions into the 21st to make sure because I really want everybody in the class to get all the points possible on the discussions. OK, I really do. OK, and I know this uh, is difficult and complicated. Um, I want to give everybody a chance to get it done. Um, and so if you're not thrilled with the, you know, the, the grade you got on your discussion, go ahead and bump it up. Um, and you can do it over the break if you want to. I'm not going to require anything over the break. I'm not going to require it, but I am going to post some materials and I'm going to walk through the draft process during the break. Um, so it's easier for you. OK, so um, the drafts for the economics essay are going to be due on the 22nd, the first and middle draft, and that'll give you a day um, to finish the final draft. OK, so I left that week, that entire week <clears throat> open for you to finish the draft stages to go through them um, and get in touch with the writing lab on the 23rd. You might want to submit it to the writing lab. Um, if you can submit it on the 21st or 22nd, that'll give them time um, to go through your writing. Um, and the online writing lab is available and they are used to looking at essays, turning around, sending them back. And I know all the tutors. They all know me. They they might have written this essay before. 
so they'll know what to look out for. Okay, um, and I, you know, want you to have their uh, insights. Okay, so that'll give you time to go through the draft process, the early draft in the middle, and get it done and submit it to the writing lab. Okay, I will be making videos um, next week on the early draft and the middle draft and to go through that. Okay, and I'll talk a little bit about starting up the draft process today. Okay, um, so let me go through that for a bit here. Um, and I want to cover a little bit of what the essay does. Um, really what it does is applies a theory, one of the theories we've read, to a situation today. Okay, And so I'm just going to set that up and kind of ask you to get the basics set, down, um, set in place. Um, because all theories, and the theories we've worked with, all theories um, provide an insight and provide some kind of prediction of what's going on. And they can be tested. And what we've done here is use economic theories. Okay. Um, one thing I want to point out is the situation we faced back, and you've all heard about the Great Depression. I'm sure that was in 1929. Um, in 2008, um, was a similar type of crisis. Those crises were um, crises of demand. Um, people did not have. There was a retreat of capital out of capitalism. That is exactly what Keynes was writing about. And it is exactly what Marx said is the problem built within capitalism. That's what he saw was the, the crisis that would be produced. Um, Marx saw that there would be a revolution and a seizing of the means of production. That, of course, did not happen. That end result did not happen. What Marx said would be the end result. Um, <clears throat> And uh, Smith did not see that crisis of uh, supply, the crisis of demand um, that created the crashes and the depressions um, that we've seen. <clears throat> okay, um, Keynes did. He had seen the crashes. He had watched them happen. Marx obviously saw them. Um, what Keynes did is he figured out that these were crises, um, uh, supply crises, but it was a crisis that could be resolved um, by repairing demand. In other words, supplying money, cash, so that people could go out and buy things again. If money suddenly becomes valuable, as you see when you have deflation, that's money becoming valuable. Um, and you might think that's a good thing. No, that's a terrible thing because that causes the uh, market to collapse. Then people hoard their money. They pull the capital out of capitalism. They hoard their money. They do not buy things. They do not spend things, and capitalism collapses. Okay, um, <clears throat> so that was the crises back in 1929 and in 2008, and those crises had happened throughout Marx's day and Keynes's day, and we saw it in 2008 with the housing market um, and with the banking crisis. Okay, um, <clears throat> today's crisis that we're facing right now is a double-edged crisis. So um, it is similar somewhat to the 1929 and 2008. Um, and I, I don't think we would yet be described as a depression. Um, we are moving into a recession rapidly um, within the last few weeks. We are. And it's a, both a crisis of supply and demand. Okay, The demand crises that we saw back in 1929 and uh, 2008 um, happened because money got valuable and people hoarded it, okay? And many people didn't have it then um, because other people had hoarded it and taken it out of the market. Um, so we're, we've got that, that people are you know losing their jobs and things like that, um, but there is simultaneously a crisis going on with supply um, where it's not overproduction that produced this. Um, it's this, you know, coronavirus, but many businesses are now going bankrupt. And so you're running into a problem with supply. And so it's a macroeconomic issue that we're all experiencing on a microeconomic um, plane. So that's what's going on. You're seeing Keynes's basic notions playing out, um, but you've always got a twist, always have a twist. And every economic theory will not explain everything. <clears throat> The same way Smith did not understand how the crises happened. The same way Marx did not know under, how to address them. The same way Keynes didn't necessarily predict what was going on here. Um, but also Friedman has his issue too. But there's always going to be strengths and some kind of shortcoming. Always will be some kind of shortcoming in every single theory. Because theories are essentially simplifications. They simplify things 
um, to recognize an overarching pattern. That's what they do. So, but there will always be a shortcoming within the theory. So that is the nature of what you're going to be doing with the essay. You're going to be updating and tweaking one of the theories um, to apply it to today's situations. Um, and you can apply anyone you feel like um, applying. But I really, really, really want to emphasize there is no simple Democrat or Republican issue at play here. It's not a matter of the Democrats are right or the Republicans are right. It's not so simple, guys. It doesn't work that way. Even though the politicians and the, you know, speaking heads on the TV want to tell you it does, it's not a simple matter of Democrat, Republican. Now, just in 2008, one thing that happened is the response to the crises. The crises really kicked in in August of 2008. Um, <clears throat> and what George Bush did was to respond with a Keynesian approach immediately, immediately. Hank Paulson um, and Ben Bernanke um, orchestrated it. They went through and bought up bonds like crazy. Um, they bought up bonds. By buying those, the people they bought them from suddenly had a lot of money, and suddenly there is more cash in the market. <clears throat> okay, That's what they essentially did. Um, Obama's policies and his administration followed the exact same Keynesian approach. They might have looked different here and there, and people on one party or the other might have started criticizing each other. But both, under Bush and Obama, they followed a Keynesian policy. Now, I will give you a heads up. There is an alternative to Keynes, one that I don't understand very well. It's Hayek. Hayek and Keynes had a number of debates throughout the 20th century. Hayek was Hayek understood exactly what Keynes was talking about. And Hayek said is that you should not have the government get involved even during a crisis. He knew you would see an economic collapse. He knew that. But he said it should be allowed to happen. That all transactions are transactions of information. That the producers and the consumers learn information um, as the markets develop. <clears throat> so uh, Hayek knew what Keynes talked about was going to happen. Hayek said, let the crash happen. Okay, And so cons uh, consumers and producers will learn and build um, a better market with better knowledge. Okay, That's what Hayek said. Um, he was a response to Keynes. <clears throat> okay, um, But the U.S. followed a Keynesian approach in the wake of 2008. Okay. Um, so that's generally it. So keep that in mind as you go through this. Um, you yourself can be liberal or conservative, um, but you need to be aware of the economics at play. You need to be aware of the trade-offs. If you move in one direction, it's not a matter of you're going to solve things. It's a matter of you're going to de-emphasize other things. If you move in another direction, you're not going to solve anything either. You're going to emphasize one set of um, values over some others that you're going to leave behind. That's what happens in economics. You emphasize one thing, you think this is a better approach, but you must be able to recognize that you're leaving certain things behind um, by not doing the other thing. So there's always a trade-off. In economics, there's always trade-offs. So you can't get away from it. Okay. So just be aware <clears throat> that those are theories and those are the strong ones that we have today. And we do have some others. Hayek is out there, and I don't fully understand Hayek. Um, but you might hear about him. He's, he's well known within libertarian circles. And so is Friedman, by the way. Um, <clears throat> so those are just other approaches to economics. But in all of them, they are aware of the trade-offs inherent in what they're doing. OK, let me jump up to this. So for starting the essay, things you should do. Now, what we're going to be doing is applying a current or applying one of the theories to a current situation. And what I want you to do is use the economist.com for that certain situation today. They are one of the best um, popular sources of economic news out there today. The vast majority, let me get myself out of that essay. The vast majority of news on economics is really awful. It is terrible. It is so pumped full of one bias or another. It's just goofy. The Economist is solid. It is overall a more conservative source, but it is very quality reporting. They get 
all of the nuances and the economics of it, okay? So it is overall a good, intelligent discussion of the situations that, are, that you can apply this to. I want you to go to the finance and economic situation. Now, let me take you over to the browser. Um, <clears throat> and let's go to The Economist. And here it is right here. Um, here's The Economist. Let me shrink this down so you can see the whole thing. Um, and let me go to the home page and tell you where, you, where I want you to go. I want you to go to the finance and economic situ uh, I, I don't want you to buy a subscription to this. And so let me go through this with everybody. You don't need to buy a subscription to The Economist. I want to be abundantly clear. If you want to, it will be a little bit easier, but you don't need to, okay? You don't need to, you really don't. Um, but you do need to handle your browser pretty well. Um, you need to be able to erase the history because The Economist only, under, only allows one article per person, then it blocks you out. What I will tell you, I will give you some heads up on some good articles so you don't have to spend a lot of time searching, erasing, searching, erasing. I'll give you the heads up on some articles, okay? Um, and I'll do that in one of the upcoming uh, videos. So let me get rid of this. Oh, let's go to the finance. Let's go go to the finance section. So let me see. So this is your home page, <clears throat> okay? And then go to the sections. <clears throat> and go to the finance and economics. That's where the best articles are. Okie doke. So the finance and economics are the best articles for this essay. Now, a heads up, some of these are what are called blogs. Most of them are news. About three quarters of them are news. About, yeah, a quarter of them are blogs. The blogs do not use, okay? The blogs are things like Shumpter, Free Exchange, um, and others, and, I'll show, and Buttonwood, and a few others. You don't want to use those. Those do what I'm asking you to do. They apply a theory to a situation. They're very good reading, <clears throat> okay? If you're somebody who is interested in economics, I would highly recommend The Economist. Um, <clears throat> so you probably already know about it. So it's a very good, um, you know, a magazine on it. Um, look for, so Free Exchange is a journal, excuse me, is a blog, Buttonwood is, but look at these and you will find an article that interests you. And what I want to urge you to do is find the article first that you think looks interesting. And you can, if you, once you open one, that is, as far as The Economist is concerned, your article. Now, if you want to get back into The Economist and you don't like your article, you have to go in and erase the history on your browser. Clean off the history. And then you can go back in as if, oh, I wasn't here before. I don't know who you're asking about. So you can go in a second time after you clean out the um, browser history and get another one. Um, I would tell you, just read the headlines and find one that you think is interesting. Stiglitz is a Nobel Prize, you know, um, economist. Um, he's fascinating. He gets into information exchange and things like that. Um, this is a good one. How sick might banks get? Um, that one would be quite interesting to apply Keynes. I'll tell you right now, heads up, a lot of these issues are going to get to monetary policy um, because that is going to be the big thing that comes up with the virus right now is how are our uh, central uh, banks going to respond to this situation. Um, what does pumping money into the economy really mean? And so I'll go through that um, when I go through the early draft stage videos. Um, so economists forecast for GDP growth in 2020, widely, very widely. That sounds like a Keynes um, article, um, but you could possibly apply Marx to that one. Marx could apply there. Don't do Buttonwood, okay? What missed rent and mortgage payments mean for the financial system? That is going to be, I would tell you that that could be a Smith, um, but it could also be a, um, what it means for the finance system. That's going to get to Keynes. Anything that deals with finance is Keynes. Um, so Allianz, Allianz is dealing with market turmoil. Um, that's a insurer. How are they? And they're a, a company with most companies. The best thing that probably applies is either Smith or Friedman. In most cases, they happen to be an insurance company 
which makes them involved in finance, which makes them involved in finance and risk mitigation. So you might apply Keynes to them, but I would say it's probably Friedman. <clears throat> okay. Um, don't do free exchange. That's a blog. April Bill's Day. So if it has a title you've seen a couple times, it's probably a blog. As you go through these, what you're going to see is that Smith here, Marks there, Friedman over there, but this one's Keynes. You're going to see a lot of Keynes news, um, things that deal with finance, that deal with central banks, that deal with bailouts, that deal with those kind of things. If you deal with anything dealing with uh, monetary policy and the movements of central banks, if you see anything regarding the Federal Reserve, you are dealing with an issue that Keynes is writing about. Okay, If you are going to deal with an issue where a market, or excuse me, a um, a company is behaving in one manner or another manner, you are probably dealing with either a Smith situation or a Friedman situation. Okay, If you are dealing with a collapse and the effects of a collapse, that is either going to be Marx or Keynes. Okay? So I want you to spend a little bit of time <clears throat> looking through The Economist and figure out which one article would go with which one economic theory. Um, I would urge you not to determine your theory before you find your article, not to do it that way. Find an article that you think you can explain using one of the theories. You might go, oh yeah, that's really, that reminds me of Marx. That, then get that article and use that article. Find the article first, find the situation first, then find out which theory would be best to explain it. Okay? And I will go a little bit more into that as we start the early draft stage, um, but I'll post that video a little bit next week. You don't have to do anything next week. You don't have to. I, it'll be there for you if you have some time on your hands to go through the early draft stage. Okay, guys? All right. Thanks for being patient and everything. Keep it up. All right. Take care.